Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is the show where we demystify technology, your gadgets, your gizmos, and of course we cover Windows 7 thoroughly here, don't we? Yes. It's, brand, it's a brand new operating system from Microsoft. We're delighted we use it every day, don't we? Of course. <laughs> And so today, of course, it's uh, spring cleaning time, and you've spent an entire winter, or in the case of people in the southern hemisphere, a summer, cl uh, clogging up your system with all kinds of stuff. Summer-related stuff. You know, maybe your machine's running slow. So today we're going to show you how to kind of clean out Windows 7 and actually, uh, spring cleaning, or perhaps potentially in Australia, fall cleaning. Right? Something that would make like sense. Because like, you guys are going to winter down there. So, shall we uh, talk about anything else or do you just want to get into it? <laughs> okay, let's take a break when we come back. Spring cleaning for Windows 7, today on Lab Rats. All right, well, before we get started, I want to talk to you a bit about Hover.com, a great place to register your domains, like my co-host sprays me with air.com, easy.com, and all kinds of other UsefulURLs.com. So you want 10% off your domains. You can get it right here using this coupon code. Thank you very much, Mr. Carruthers. All right, let's get on with the show. Um, so Windows 7, why are you going to want to clean out Windows 7? You know, why would you want to spring clean your, your machine? Because Windows is full of junk. <laughs> well, it's true. It's very true. I mean, you know, it's very different than the Mac in many ways. Um, it has a registry, right? It's mm -hmm. a place which keeps all kinds of settings. And when you, if you install a lot of freeware, a lot of shareware, you buy a lot of programs and get rid of them, things like that, um, you know, there, things are going to get put into the registry. They're going to put onto the hard drive. There's going to be a lot of stuff there. So over time, you're going to collect a lot of junk on Windows, and it's going to start to slow down. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the Mac can collect a lot of pollution inside as well. But it, it's a slightly different uh, setup. But right. it's a lot of what we're going to cover today, you can apply to the Mac as well. but. This is Windows 7 specific for the purposes of this episode anyways. Absolutely. Well, I think so that's the, the really good place to start is to uninstall any programs that you, you're not using right now. And, you know, let's face it, when you get a new computer, there's a lot of stuff that's pre-installed on there for you that they think is useful. It's trialware. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that, right? Uh, get rid of any shareware or freeware that you're not using. Any even commercial paid software that you just, you tried it, you bought it, and you don't use it anymore, get rid of that as well. You want to create as much space on your hard drive as possible and get rid of all of that material that is not necessary. Yeah. There's a lot of free files out there, that, uh, and a lot of them available on 2 and they're a lot of fun, but not everyone, every file is for everybody. So yeah, get rid of it all. There but you. take an inventory first. Make sure that your family members aren't using these files before you get rid That's of them. That's a good point. Yeah, they'll yeah, kill yeah. their computing experience. They'll be very unhappy if you undo the SpongeBob game for your... Dad, why did you get rid of my SpongeBob game? <laughs> Now, to do that, for those of you that, uh, that haven't done this before on Windows 7, you literally want to either use the uninstaller program that comes along with, uh, with the program itself. It'll be in the folder on the, on the start menu. Uh, or just use the built-in Windows application. Type in Add, Remove, and you'll see the Add or Remove Programs utility that comes up. It's, you can find that also in the, uh, the control panel. It's a quick way to do it this way, though. And you basically want to go in there, choose the application you're not using. Here, there's a tax program that I... Um, installed and I'm not using it anymore because this tax is done. So I want to click on there, click on uninstall, and uh, it'll say, are you sure you want to install this? And off you go to the races. And it'll remove it. You'll need a reboot, of course, but, uh, but uh, and just go through one at a time of all the programs. You may find that if you haven't done this in a while, there's a lot, a lot of, of programs. Stuff. It's going to take you a while to do this. Yeah, and this is, this is nice because it puts them all in one place, whereas trying to find them one by one in the start menu or on the hard disk somewhere, that's not so much fun. That's right. And uh, you can get to that uh, easier from the search menu, although you can get through to it through control panel. Uh, Vista and Windows 7, it's a little bit harder to find it. It's, it's not as obvious to me these mm -hmm. days. So, yeah, the, the well, search tip is really nice. There are two views in control panel. Yeah. They're trying to make it easier, but it actually, for the, for the old hats, added a little harder. Okay, let's talk a bit about finding large files. You know, there's a lot of media files you've accumulated, maybe a lot of sound files, uh, MOV files, movie files, WMV files, Windows Media Video mm -hmm. files. Excuse me. You know, all kinds of photographs, they, they tend to clog up the hard drive. Now, and you want, really want to get your hard drive, you know, to a point where there's at least 25% of its space is available to the system, mm -hmm. right? So if it's a terabyte hard drive or a half a terabyte hard drive, you can take 25% off of that number and make that available on the system. And, you know, so that can be a sizable amount of data, but also, just face it, when you have all kinds of wallpapers, music, you know, home movies, you have one of these flip cameras, 
there's lots of old data on there. If you're yeah. a Photoshop junkie, you maybe yeah. have old versions of stuff you've designed and that sort of thing. Yeah. Get rid of it all. A lot of photographers out there, when they're when they're out shooting in the field, they'll shoot uh, ten shots just to get the one that they really really like. So there might be nine shots that you can theoretically delete, and that clears up a lot of space when you're shooting in RAW or, or high resolution. So. Right. so the easiest way to do that, I think, is probably to uh, you know go down here to the Start button. There's the search programs and files, so you could type in the, the, the type of the file extension. You know, if it's WMV, it's dot .wmv. Uh, you, uh, you could, you know, whatever, the, whatever something that reminds you of it, maybe dot .psd file, for example, psd, that'll bring all those up. Also, too, you can also, if you go into your uh, computer, uh, into my computer, or what's called computer now, top right-hand corner of any of the system windows also has a search function. And as you type in things there, it'll start to filter them. And you can you know, choose by size and by type and that kind of thing. So it's a great way of filtering and finding very specific files. Get rid of them, right? Mm -hmm. Don't forget, when you start to, uh, to delete these things, first back up anything that you want to keep. And, uh, but also, you're going to need to clear out your uh, recycle bin as well. Because mm -hmm. when you hit the delete key, it goes into the recycle bin, but it's not necessarily yeah. gone from the system. It hasn't cleared up the space on your machine. Right. Now, the one thing about that solution is you know what you're looking for. You're looking for MOV files or whatever. But sometimes there are things that you don't know you're looking for yet that may be taking up space on, on your machine. Well, the, the system I just showed you there mm -hmm. actually has a filter by size. So you mm -hmm. can actually see, show me file sizes you know, that are larger than 1 meg or larger than 5 megs or larger than X. Mm -hmm. uh, or smaller, and you can do it by size as well. It'll show you all the things. The problem with that is, especially, is if you find a large file and you go, "Oh, I should delete this." And one I always think of is uh, there's a Java package that's necessary on Windows when you mm -hmm. install that called Java something dot zip. When you delete it, you actually disable all your Java running Java. Yeah. You know uh, the plugins on. So so be very careful yeah. about deleting anything you don't know. Yeah. explicitly what it is. Although you may be able to find a program or a big file that was created by some other program that you've long since stopped using and you're like, four gigs? How did I create four gigs of this? But you, uh, you have a program here that actually makes this a little bit uh, easier to, uh, to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I've just, uh, this is a piece of freeware. You can find this on 2cows.com and uh, it's called Winderstat, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of a visualiz visualization software. It helps you kind of visualize what's on your hard drive, how big the files are that sort of thing. Um, something that you've used a lot in the past, right? Uh, Winderstad is a version, it, it's very similar to a program I've used a lot on the Mac called Disk Inventory X. Mm -hmm. Now what it does is it uh, searches through, indexes everything on your machine, and then looks to see uh, you know, how to organize it in a visual way so right. that you can get an idea just by looking at the screen. Okay, there's a gigantic chunk of data right I here. I wonder what this is. What is it? Like, yeah. why is this taking up half my hard drive? Right. And, and this is the thing that I know is that there's a lot of times I'll go looking for something. I've, I've forgotten about this file completely. I forgot that it existed. I don't know how it got there. Another program created a huge temp file and, and threw it on there. And I'm not using the program, but it's eating up so much of my hard drive space. Yeah, you could, you could think, have I got nothing in there and realize, wait a second, there's a ton of junk in there that yeah. I didn't even know was there. Yeah, well, one big culprit for this is creating uh, disk images. So if you're burning a DVD, sometimes it'll create a temporary file on there mm -hmm. and then burn it. But then you might still have like four or five gigabytes of space just sitting on there as a disk image that you don't need anymore because you burned the disk. So as you can see, as it starts up here, there's a little Pac-Man that go back and forth. It sort of shows you that it's doing an inventory of the disk back yeah, and we'll forth. Take a look at the progress of that later and yeah. see the, uh, the we'll, visual We'll actually see w exactly what it looks like. But that's a, a great little application you can run to visualize what's on your hard drive. Um, one of my favorite tricks, I think, and really is probably the one of the most critical things you could do, especially if your system runs really slow, is to go into a system utility called msconfig. Mm -hmm. msconfig basically allows you to look at the startup routines of Windows 7 to find out what's loading before Windows really kind of gets up and going. Mm -hmm. um, and so easiest way to get to that is to go come down here uh, and type msconfig right there. Um, and let's get that going. Now, you're gonna, when it comes up on the start menu, right click on this. Oops. And uh, what you're going to see is, is uh, run as administrator. Mm -hmm. Because the thing about that is it's an administrative type of function. And it may not let you do a whole lot of changes if that's the case. So make sure you do that first. So I'm just going to get that going. And uh, here it is here. So system configuration. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going really, to, I'm interested in two areas here. I'm interested in startup. If you click on startup, you can actually see everything that runs when Windows starts up. 
Right. So you know you're going to find references to your uh, antivirus product here, uh, uh, QuickTime loader, all kinds of things like that. They really don't necessarily need. Mm -hmm. Of course, the antivirus bits and pieces you will need if you want that to yep. run. So um, you can click up here and move this over. You can actually see the full name of everything that's running here. Here's Acro Play. This is Adobe Acrobat Fast Starter, right? right? So you really don't need to run that because the next time you run Adobe Acrobat, it's going to take a little longer if this program is not running to start up. So you can uncheck that. And in fact, you can pretty much uncheck everything up in here. Um, one of the things that you may not want to, though, is anything related to iTunes. Hmm. If you're used to iTunes starting up and you know, making life easy if you use your iPod a lot. It's not a good idea to unplug. Un Turn off yeah. the iTunes stuff. Yeah, here's the thing: is a lot of these things, if you uncheck them, then some of the convenience of your computer will be lost. Be lost. Like exactly. you might be unchecking things that create the function keys on your notebook, for example. If you have media player keys that aren't baked into Windows, then you could be disabling those. That's right. But so be selective here. I mean, worst case, you can go back into it and turn them on later if, mm -hmm. if something's missing, for example. The other place to look to improve performance of your system is go down here to the uh, the services tab, which is next door to startup. And then click on, be sure to do this, so click on hide all Microsoft services. This will run all the services or basically all the kind of the fundamentals that need to run Windows uh, in behind the scenes, but it also puts the antivirus stuff and bits, and bits and pieces like that in here as well. So turn on hide all Microsoft services. You don't want to turn any of those off because Windows will get broken if you do mm -hmm. in many cases. But then you can go through and you can actually you know, start up window blinds, which is kind of a, an enhancement to the look and feel here. I could actually turn that off and uh, uh, now that would, the program wouldn't work anymore, yeah. but if I have been using it, it's taking up yeah. all kinds of space and memory. And you looking in the Services tab and the Startup tab here is also a good way to identify programs that you've installed in the past that you may not remember that you've installed that aren't necessarily apparent anywhere else. Right. So you can find them and say, ah, I got to uninstall that. Let's right. go do it. So um, what's our progress like on Winderstat? Is it done yet? Let's have a quick look here. Still, Still working gone. away. Almost yeah, done. Yeah, this is the problem with, with this one is it uh, indexes your entire machine, so it's a little bit. Uh, Time intensive. One of the things you reminded me of before we did this episode is uh, we should talk about now is fonts. Yes. Right. You know, if you use a lot of uh, graphics and things like that, you might have, have packages that install tons and tons of fonts. Fonts can actually slow down your system. Oh, they slow down your system immensely. So if you put a thousand fonts on your machine, the one thing that a lot of people don't realize is the fonts aren't called up as they're used. Fonts are called up at the beginning of your boot up session, so it loads all of those fonts into to memory so that it can be accessible to any program that uses fonts, like Word or, uh, say, a video editing program. So they're there and ready to go. And if you've got uh, lots and lots of them, it eats up a lot of your system resources. So so simple as that. If you want to go down again, go down to your Start menu, type in F-O-N-T-S, Fonts, and you have a bunch of different utilities to manage that. Um, you can just click on the Fonts utility there, Preview, Delete, or Show and Hide Fonts. Mm -hmm. I think that runs if you, if you click on the, the same as if you click on the Fonts folder. As you can see here, it started up, and it's take, taken an inventory of all the fonts on my system. Mm -hmm. And I can just you know, choose them, preview them, delete them, yeah. whatever I want to do. Yeah. So it, one thing that you can do is drag them out of that particular folder and put them into a, a temporary holding. So if you don't want to get rid of the, the Led Zeppelin font, for example, but you don't want it loading up every single time, just put it in a different folder and load it in as you need Only it. Only when you need it. Or if you really want to be a graphics professional, then you can get a, a program like Suitcase, which uh, allows you to swap your fonts in and out of memory on the fly. Okay, good. And finally, you know, if, if all of this is just too much for you and you just want a simple program that's going to, you know, clean this up for you, you may want to use one of these registry editors. Registry, of course, is a kind of like a big filing cabinet that keeps all the settings. And there's all kinds of bits and pieces in there that get accumulated over, the, over a period of time. You can use a commercial product. UniBlue's got a product called Registry Brute Booster. PC Tools has got a product called uh, Registry Mechanic. Um, some people, and I think you might be one of them, don't believe these things do a whole lot. Yeah, for, for a lot of people, they're not going to do a whole lot unless your system is in really, really dire shape. Yeah. I think for the person that really doesn't want to worry about this kind of stuff and wants to make sure it's relatively clean, you know, it's a pretty good investment. Again, it's not going to make an enormous difference to your system uh, yeah. relative to the manual process, but certainly it's, uh, it's worthwhile if you want to spend a few dollars and you want ongoing maintenance, it's relatively yeah. easy. Right, so if you're looking at a uh, registry cleaner as a way to get 50% power boost or performance boost, it's not going to happen. No. But, but if your system is really bad shape, you might get a little boost. For most people, you may be at 1%, if, if even that. Right. Very good. OK, let's take a break. Um, I know you have one other little thing you want to, what you use when you uh, spring clean every year. Yes. Uh, we'll have a look at your little trick in a minute. But let's take a break and go to a commercial message. And when we come back, uh, we have Sean's tip. We have uh, Clip of the Week and Picture Time as well. 
Well, before we get to the clip of the week, uh, two things. I think Windows Stats finally done its inventory here. So as you can see, visually, you know, there are all kinds of blocks of uh, data that's inventoried here. If I click on the green ones there, look, TL TLP file. There's a great big chunk of blue down here. It's an application of some sort taking up a lot of space. It could be my HR block uh, tax files possible. It could be, but the, the thing I like about this and Disk Inventory X on the Mac is it, it's a very nice visual way to visualize what is happening on this. Disk. There's this gigantic file. Well, let's find out what that is. Right. You might need it, but if it's something you've forgotten about it, hey, it's a good way to get rid of a gigantic block. There's one right there. We, we used Camtasia Studio to record our screen, and I just clicked on a big pink block, and it's Camtasia.msi. That's the installer mm -hmm. for that program. So I now I could actually free up, what does it look, 165 megabytes right there. Right, because you don't need way. the installer anymore now right. that it's installed. There you go. Uh, you have another one other quick tip. All right, well, we were talking a lot of software tips here for, uh, for spring cleanup. One of the things I like to do, especially right after I've done my taxes, is uh, do a little... Uh, physical cleanup around my office as well. So I have this big shredder now from Fellows, which is really, really beautiful. And uh, it, it is almost professional level, but it has a couple neat features. It's diamond cut, it doesn't jam, and it actually has a sensitivity uh, feature on there. When you get your finger anywhere near the opening, Ah. It actually stops grinding away at the paper. It, it actually senses when you're uh, So, you, so if your son and daughter comes in and they start yeah. poking little fingers in there, it won't exactly. cut the fingers off. Well, yeah. nice. So it's, it's a nice safety feature on that. So Good. Very nice. Well, speaking of little kids, uh, we have a, a fun little uh, segment coming up here right here called, uh, it's a new show called Developer Junior. Developer Junior is a show aimed at kids, tweens, and teens to help them learn to be better geeks. And uh, episode two right here talks all about making movie files and how to become a director with a program you can get for Windows. So let's take a look at that. Welcome on deck, I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. Hey, you told me we were gonna do something really cool today. Yeah, we are. We're gonna make our own movie using Windows Live Movie Maker. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we're gonna make our own movie? Mm. Oh my god. Oh, hold on, I gotta get something just to be right. One second. What? Ready. <laughs> Whoa, what's with the uh, new look? Well, I gotta look apart. I'm gonna be a big time director now. Gone Hollywood. Yeah. I like the way you think. Me too. All right, well, you wanna see how to make a movie? Let's do this. All right, you can see that entire show uh, at devjunior.com or head on over to butterscotch.com. You'll find it in the uh, shows tab as well. Yes, All right, sir. Mr. Carruthers, uh, some pictures for us. Yes, and we will be shredding them after we uh, do this, either on the computer or with my shredder. At okay, home. got it. So, first up, our friend uh, Tarek, who is in Texas, and he wants to show us uh, lab rats in various incarnations on both huge screens and smaller screens. Nice. And look, he's got an iPad. He, he does. He's looking at us on the iPad. We almost saw him. We were thinking about going to South, South, South by Southwest, and he invited us to come see him. So, we'll see you one of these okay. days, Tarek. There we go. Okay, good. And uh, second of all? Yes. From the other side of the world, we've got one from Dimitri, who is in Riga in Latvia. And is he's, peaches? He's peaches. holding peaches. Latvian like. peaches. There we go. <laughs> okay, that's very good. Very nice. We love these kinds of pictures, so uh, you can send your pictures too. Peaches are awesome, even if they are from around the world <laughs> at labrats.tv. Or more simple, feedback at labrats.tv. Feedback at labrats.tv. I wonder what would happen if you put a peach through a shredder. <laughs> it wouldn't be pretty. No, the sensor not. would stop it. It wouldn't damage your peaches. Come on. Right. They see? It's perfect. It has an anti-peach shredding mechanism. We love people at Fellows. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for tuning in this week and checking out our spring cleaning uh, Windows 7 episode. It would be foolish for us to be here if you weren't out there installing stuff that you're going to have to install later. My name's Andy Walker. I'm Shaka Rathers. And we'll see you next time. Are you